Fitz Tepper from TechCrunch here, and we're talking to Edward from Game Face Labs. How do you do, Fitz? Thanks so much for meeting with us. Thank you for having um, me. And you know, VR is killing it at CES 2016, um, and it's always nice to see a player that's not uh, Gear VR or Oculus, um, and actually, you know, has stuff up and running and working. When I, you know, I tried your product about 10 minutes ago, uh, and it's fantastic. Thank you. So I guess um, you want to start by telling us a bit about the company and maybe your background. Absolutely. Um, so we started in about 2009 with 3D gaming technologies. Um, we developed a platform that allows you to deliver content very quickly, up to 100 times faster than your traditional app stores. Um, and we do this by some very clever virtualization. And it's effectively allowed us to deliver very large applications very quickly. And so we effectively can get zero latency, virtual reality, cloud gaming working. Uh, we can take an application like Angry Birds that usually is only, let's say, 100 meg, and we can deliver that in about five seconds. And so, so you start playing it earlier while absolutely. it downloads. You have this instant gratification nature to gameplay, but the content is delivered from the cloud, but it's all locally rendered on the headset. And so with this platform in mind, we realized that VR was going to be the next big platform. And as such, we built up a headset that we felt was more in line with the future of all VR devices. Something that you don't need to plug a mobile phone into, nor that you need to plug into a PC to use it. So you jumped into hardware. Absolutely. And so we realized that what we should do is find the most powerful components possible. And we ended up using the latest Integra technology from NVIDIA, uh, which is an incredibly powerful mobile SoC. Uh, we paired that with a very high resolution 2.5K OLED display panel. And we have a very wide field of view of today around 110 degrees, but we'll be upping that to about 140 degrees. Um, so this entire concept we have called a head-mounted console because it is quite literally a device that will be benchmarked at about twice the power of an Xbox 360 stamped to your face. And the whole thing's in here. Absolutely. The Everything is built in into here. the headset. Uh, for reference, the headset itself uh, weighs a little bit less than the DK2. Um, we have a very, as I say, wide field of view, which is being increased. But what makes our headset different from your other mobile phone-based devices is the fact that we have a very powerful SoC and a custom fan-based cooling solution. Uh, we have a battery so what do you here. explain the cooling solution? So mobile VR is plagued with one issue, where your technology will basically have a limitation where after 20 or 30 minutes use, the, the, uh, the mobile phones will tend to overheat and you'll start losing frames and you'll induce motion sickness. And so from there, we realize we need a fan cool solution to be able to keep the headset from overheating to give you a really long-lasting experience while still being untethered from any other machine. Um, and so we built up the, fa the, the, the custom fan cooled solution, and this, coupled with a, a massive battery that we have here, gives us up to seven hours use time. So we have Got this it. very high resolution headset that will effectively work for up to seven hours uh, without having to be plugged into anything else. So explain um, for the viewers you know, the advantages of not having a headset that you slide your phone into. So your mobile phone is a mobile phone. It is never really built to be a VR device as such, and certainly not today's generation's phones. And so they have limited storage capacity, they have no heat dissipation solution, and as such, they can only really be used for a few minutes at a time before your experience starts lacking. But mobile VR is great because it's wireless. You, you have the ability to actually move around uh, an environment without being tethered to anything. And so we, we feel for virtual reality to really cross the chasm and to get into the hands of the masses, we need a device that is built as a mobile headset that is powerful enough to have a desktop class GPU inside of it, but without actually having to be plugged into anything and without having to use your mobile phone. Um, as VR content gets larger and larger, these mobile phone solutions are going to have an issue where they have to keep very large VR applications on their device for the time that you need to use your phone as a phone. So we feel that for now, tethered PC VR as well as wireless mobile VR is great to get the ball rolling, but really you want something that will be much more long-lasting. Which is why you made this. Absolutely, which is why we then went on to create the, uh, the Game Face headset. So tell us a bit about where you are in development, when you think you're going to make it to market. Um, so we recently announced uh, a couple of months ago that we've now partnered with Valve, so we now have access to Lighthouse tracking technology. And this okay. is very exciting stuff, because Game Face is now becoming a hybrid VR headset, something that will allow you to plug into a PC and use the Steam VR content. So on top of that, our headset also works straight out of the box with any Google Cardboard content. And so we have a, a headset that has a very comprehensive list of content that can be played on it. Uh, we will start sending developer consoles out to uh, developers over the next few months, and then we'll look to have a consumer headset going at the beginning of 2017. And the other yeah. big important question about yes. getting things to the masses yes. is the P word. Yes. We haven't announced anything yet, but we're, certainly, word. we're aiming to be on par to a, a current generation games console. So something around the five to six hundred dollar mark is really what we're aiming for. 
So the Oculus is five ninety nine. Correct. Correct. Yes, indeed. Are you going to beat it? We. I can't say at this early stage. It's still we're still a, way, a, a year away from having our consumer headset, and a lot will change between now and then. But certainly, as we have our app store on the te on the headset, we have a means of earning revenue that we don't. So need talk to. about that a bit more. The app store. So the app store is awesome. Um, we've taken some uh, some some DARPA technology that has uh, been spun out, and we have built this virtual reality um, ecosystem, effectively something along the lines that we have this very low level. Um, sandbox installed on our headset, and then we take any application and we s install it into the cloud. Um, once we have the game and the, the, the client installed on the headset, we can trick the operating system into thinking we have 100% of the game installed, when in actual fact we only have between 1% to 5% of the this game. This is what you were talking about earlier, faster Absolutely. downloads. And I'll give you a demo uh, when, we, when we get to hit. And so we effectively trick the operating system into thinking 100% of the game is there, when we only have a small partial of between 1% to 5%. Now from there, we load the application up, and then we continue to pull down the assets that we need on demand. So you're effectively having a cloud-based but locally rendered virtual reality platform. And so this whole concept of a instant gratification, zero risk of piracy, because of course we're using military-grade encryption to a sandbox that's at a lower level than the OS, means we can guarantee that there's no real issue for content being pirated. Um, but on top of all of that, due to the nature in which this content's being delivered, we have this unparalleled level of insight into uh, uh, analytical information of how content is being consumed by the end user. We can see, let's say, Bob might be dying too much in one level and Sally may be giving up too much at the other level. And we can give this, con uh, this information back to developers for them to improve their VR experiences. And this it. is crucial in a time like today where it's the Wild West, so to speak. We don't know exactly what's going to work and what will be the best. So you've talked about app stores and this download technology and the head tracking technology and the fan technology. You're doing a lot. We are. I mean, we you're are. doing everything. We're, we're trying to create a, a complete VR ecosystem for a standalone console. And so it's uh, no easy feat, but we've been working quite hard on it the past four years now. So, I mean, either other huge companies, like mm. Google, they're focused on one thing. They're yes. just doing the headset, at least publicly. Yes. You're not worried about spreading yourself too thin? I don't think so. We have a very strong team. We have some, some very uh, great members of the company who have been promoting uh, our company around. So we have uh, Ted Shilowitz, who is the, uh, one of the leading Hollywood voices for virtual reality, has joined the company. Um, we have a whole... How variety. many are you? Uh, so today we have, uh, we're working with a design house, WSI, who have about 20 odd engineers who are helping us on the hardware and the software. Um, we have a management team of about 10 people, and we have an advisory board now of about 8 people. And, and you're based in London, the UK? We're based in London at the moment, but we're in the process of moving out to the Bay Area. Why? It's very They're expensive housing there. Do you know that? Did London, they tell you that yet? London or the Bay Area. <laughs> we, we so why San Francisco? Seriously, though. Really, we, all of our partners are based in the Bay Area. So all of our hardware pro uh, providers, a lot of our software, and again, a lot of content gets, uh, gets done all in either the city or in the Bay Area. And the level of productivity we achieve when we're based in, in the Bay Area is just huge compared to that in London. London has a great tech scene, but not so much for VR. Not yet. But, I mean, in the Bay Area, your VR company, 1,232. Yes. In indeed. London, you're probably VR company 10. Yes. But Don't we, you want to stand out? No, we have enough confidence in both our headset and our platform that that will speak volumes about what we're doing. Okay, good answer. <laughs> so, um, VR is great, but, uh, you know, a lot of people, they haven't experienced it yet. No. So, what's the key to bringing VR to the masses? Really... I think what people are doing today, anyone who's played with any VR headset or even owns any VR headset has probably become one of the best marketing means for that VR headset. Mm -hmm. um, you give someone a headset, they will happily go and show it off to a friend. But like, I just tried it on, but there are you know, 100 people out here who are not going to get to try on your headset. Absolutely. How so do you fix that? We, are, we hold developer events in San Francisco and in London, so we get developers to come in to get a hands-on time with the headset itself today. Um, but short of that, we're shipping developer kits out to our core list of developers for them to start generating the next wave of VR content. And so really, we are biding our time so that we can have a launch around GDC with uh, quite a few headsets to be on the show floor in the hands of developers with content being generated. And so this is really the 2016 is the year that Gameface will be getting the headset out there. Got it. So we have like 30 seconds left. Go for it. You just showed me, we watched the Mayweather fight, a Cowboys game, some right. dolphin swimming. What is your favorite use of VR? So... <laughs> it's a very good question. I Personally, I enjoy virtual reality in the form of rendered environments as opposed to 360 content as such, but only because all video games by their very nature are effectively VR environments and they're very easy to adopt this technology. 360 video is coming along leaps and bounds. We're beginning to see stereo 360 3R, but in my opinion, video 360 is not quite VR yet. It's getting there, but yeah. really, 
we found things like the, the, the quick game, like Pocket Dolphins I showed you, is not really a it game. It was cool. But it's, it's a nice experience. But, but then we have uh, demos such as um, Bomb Squad, which is a really, really addictive game that you put the headset on, and you'll Got be it. in there for 45 minutes to an hour to play these things. So we're out of time. Thank you what? so much for talking to me, Edward, from Game Face Labs. Thank you very much. And we'll look forward pleasure. to your product in 2017. Thank you. Cheers. So